the honorable chief minister shri manohar lal khattar ji my colleagues uh, shri venkaiah naidu shri dharmendra pradhan ministers of the haryana government captains of the industry your excellencies ladies and gentlemen in the last few months i have had uh, several experiences in many states of india to address and participate in similar conferences after the new government was formed i slightly deviated from the conventional phrase which was being used about india that we are a country where there is cooperative federalism and i had within the first few months itself started saying that uh, in addition to being cooperative federalism india is also competitive federalism the future will be competitive federalism because it's not merely the center state relations but it is states and states competing against each other in order to attract investment and my experience of these several global investor meets that i have seen across the country increasingly persuades me that this is what the future is going to be there are of course downsides of this also because those who don't reform the people in those states are going to be at a disadvantageous position and those who are in a position to offer a more favorable economic business and political environment to the investors certainly are states which are going to benefit reform or perish kun be more true than it is today the investors uh, we must all bear in mind are not philanthropists they are business people and for every rupee or dollar of investment that they make they weigh each possibility they take several factors into consideration which influence their investment decisions and therefore if there is an environment of paralysis in a given state policies are not reforming the investor doesn't feel induced enough to invest there but if some state becomes a happening state as you are aspiring to be there is a natural attraction that the investing community will find himself in to invest there stability in terms of policy predictability in terms of policy the overall attitude of not merely the government but various political formulations because governments can change also and with change of government you don't want a complete u turn in terms of policy and therefore these are all factors the investments investors will weigh if a particular state uh, gets an image of uh, its ethics and integrity standards not being very high its investments will suffer if decision making is slow investment will suffer if taxation structures are very unreasonable and unpredictable investments will suffer and therefore in order to make sure that investment which is the starting point of economic activity it will lead to job creation it will lead to profitability for the investors that in turn will lead to an enriched revenue with the state so that it's able to create uh, better infrastructure better facilities in the state itself 
I think uh, we have to all gear up in every state for a future where we then become the best possible targets as far as an investment is concerned. India itself as a country today has some natural advantages. It has a natural advantage of the fact that the, when the world is slowing down, India is still able to maintain respectable rates of growth. When global investors are today looking at India, they look at a fact where global growth has slowed down, but India still maintains amongst the large economies the highest growth rate in the world. So obviously there is an increased economic activity, so people are looking at India. India also has a, a very large market. We house one-sixth of the global population. And therefore, whoever invests in India looks at the size of the market that he's going to address. We have a large human resource. And therefore, to get a talent pool itself is uh, an advantageous situation. And then within, within India, when the investor walks in, what is it that the investor is going to look at if he looks at a state like Haryana? Haryana obviously has several advantages. And I think the greatest advantage that Haryana has is its proximity to the national capital. It's a natural advantage Haryana has. 13 of its districts on various sides are abutting the national capital. And therefore, being a part of the NCR region, being a part of the various industrial corridors which are going to be created, Haryana obviously has that advantage. There is a second advantage Haryana has. Haryana has a more uh, composite economy. It has a very large uh, agricultural base. It's also a state which cleverly over the last 30, 40 years transformed slowly into a manufacturing state. And I think one of the greatest things that happened to Haryana was to get the automobile hub on the outskirts of Delhi. And when Gurgaon, Manesar, this region became an automobile hub, the ancillary units came up, the large units had come up, and slowly more and more industry of various kinds started coming up. Haryana also, as Dr. Trehan and Malvinder mentioned, is growing into an important service sector economy. This whole corridor on the outskirts of Delhi, abutting these 13 districts, the medical services, the educational institutions, these are all important networks which are developing here. They create jobs, people come here for education, people come here for health care. And the geographical area from where they come is also very large. But there are several other areas which Haryana will still have to race through if not walk through. Because what is a developmental activity of Haryana which is extended to these 13 districts abutting Delhi and maybe some areas abutting uh, Chandigarh. There are other parts of the state which for a composite development also need to come up. And we must bear in mind that when social challenges emerge, 
one of the principal reasons they emerge is on account of inequalities, inequalities between communities, inequalities between regions, inequalities between different sets of people. And therefore, this development which is taking place in some geographical parts of the state has effectively to be addressed in other parts of the state. And I think it's extremely important that the network of educational institutions, and that is where Haryana also stands, uh, uh, has a huge opportunity for growing, whether through the state institutions or to private sector institutions, in those parts of the state has to be expanded. Additionally, as uh, my friend Suresh Prabhu just mentioned before he left, the connectivity which is extremely good on the GT road, Karnal Road. I think the other parts of the state, both in terms of railways and otherwise, the Delhi Amritsar Highway, which Nitin Gadkari has announced, I think will be an important contributor. The railways itself can be a very powerful contributor for improving upon the connectivity within the states itself. There are some important initiatives uh, which we have announced in the union budget, I think which if closely examined, not only open a huge scope for investment in the state, but also can contribute to the uniform development of the state itself. Agricultural products produced in India, processed in India, and sold in India, there is an inadequacy of capital. And therefore, this is one area where I've announced that uh, we open up for foreign direct investment 100%. And if there is one sector of industry which has a huge potential in several parts of the state, for which we should make a concentrated and a concerned effort to woo investors is to get investors in the marketing and the manufacturing of what agricultural produce is produced in the state itself. Their investment will have the impact of reaching the farmer. The farmer will have a direct access itself to the market. The wastage of uh, agricultural products itself can be eliminated. And this is one area where I think we can contribute to, the, to a significant economic development of a state where 53% of the people are still involved in agriculture itself. Captain Abhimanyu told me that the net GDP of this 53% is 14%. And therefore, if 53% of those involved in agriculture get only 14% of the total income, that itself is an indication of the fact that this is one area where investment is required, where the inequality itself has to be eliminated, and where enrichment will have to be done. Another initiative uh, which we've announced this year is that we intend to significantly amend or add a chapter in the Motor Vehicles Act to do away with this whole uh, permit raj system in the state transports. The initiative will lie with the state governments where you will probably have to free up uh, the state from this permit quota system as far as bus services and the state transport services are concerned and allow private entrepreneurs to bring on at their own cost thousands of buses onto the streets, the state merely having a regulatory mechanism at its disposal. This will not only provide a great convenience as far as uh, the uh, public is concerned, but also add jobs to a number of youth, particularly from the rural areas, who, are, uh, who have inadequacy in terms of employment. The Civil Aviation Ministry is making, uh, uh, drafting a report on regional air connectivity. There are almost 160 air strips in the country owned by the state governments built during the Second World War which are not being used. 
There are 25 airports of the Airport Authority of India which are in disuse today. And therefore, where there is uh, a possibility of an increased traffic, air connectivity to those regions, and Haryana certainly can make a good claim for one or two of these regions in areas uh, where connectivity is relatively difficult it, uh, itself. Haryana has a great advantage, as I said, of uh, close proximity to Delhi. And real estate, townships, infrastructure creation has been the uh, uh, one of the main drivers of the economy as far as Haryana is concerned. And I think it's extremely important if you see some of the important initiatives which we have taken in the course of last year and three more initiatives that I have announced in the budget. I think delays in your infrastructural programs itself could be eliminated if we look at some of those initiatives. You yourself mentioned that your Kundli Manesar uh, highway already delayed for almost uh, years altogether. That is one initiative which is capable of changing the face of the region as far as those regions are concerned. We have already amended and it's now operational the arbitration law and therefore provided a chapter for fast track arbitrations to be completed in less than a year. We have created commercial divisions in every high court. I have now proposed in the budget that uh, public contracts, how the disputes are to be resolved, a statutory mechanism to be created that these projects don't remain stalled over years. One of the important factors which stalls these projects is that with the passage of time, the cost difference takes place, both because of raw material and also because of labor cost and various other factors. And therefore, nobody in government is willing to take the responsibility for cost escalation for fear of consequences. So a statutory mechanism by which cost escalations could be negotiated under an oversight itself has been put into operation. And therefore, if all these initiatives are taken together, the reason for indefinite delay in these infrastructure pro projects not only hurts the development of the state, but also leads eventually to much larger costs and leads to inconvenience of people. And if we are to look ahead for more townships, uh, more uh, uh, highways, more communications, I think each one of these has to be uh, thought of well in advance. For instance, I see no reason. Uh, I heard Pawan Munjal mentioning that uh, it used to take him 45 minutes to reach Darugera. Now it takes him one and a half hours to do that. And if we don't uh, immediately do something to remedy this, it probably will take him three and a half hours uh, 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 a few years from now. And therefore, connecting Delhi and this part of the, because Delhi is saturated, Delhi can't grow more. So the entire spillover advantage of the national capital is going to come to Haryana, and in Haryana, Gurgaon and the areas beyond that are going to be the natural recipients. And since we have the uh, presence of Sri Venkia and I do also here, the Honorable Chief Minister, I think uh, not only thinking it's high time that the second and the third route of communication between Delhi and this part of the state is immediately thought of and put into operation because it, uh, the, the program today started late because I was 20 minutes late thanks to the NH8 and the traffic because of it. So, so the anticipated time is, uh, is taking much more and therefore it's extremely important that we start thinking in terms, years ahead in terms of creating a fresh uh, communication channel on the road itself between Delhi and this part because this is going to be the natural recipient of all growth and development. And I think it's uh, Haryana which has, uh, it's a small state, it's a state where uh, poverty levels are lesser than the rest of the country, it's a state where manufacturing, services, agriculture all exist. It's a state where there is a potential for enriching the agriculture by using some of the new initiatives which we have announced in the budget. 
and it's a state where I think there is a sense of entrepreneurship. People feel confident coming here. That's why such large industry has come here. And I think uh, if we lay down uh, the future roadmap of the state, this uh, increased investment in which people are expressing a lot of confidence will surely see the light of the day. And more investment has one great advantage. It leads to further more investment. And therefore, in this environment of competitive federalism, where every other state is vying for investment, I personally do feel that Haryana, with several geographical and natural advantages, can lead the way. It's an opportunity which we must not give up. My best wishes to the state government and to the people of Haryana, who, are, who should be able to make the best out of this situation, notwithstanding some transient crisis, because of issues in the state which come up, I think the state has a huge sense of resilience by which it's able to overcome these crises as it has, which took place a few weeks ago. Thank you very much. And all that.